Ugh. Is it you again? Oh, fine. I'll impart some more of my wisdom to you, if I must. Welcome back to Birmingham. My name is... Well, you don't need to know my name. Now, I understand you're learning English. Well, if you want to learn English, you need to be able to understand a lot of different accents. Not everybody speaks English in the same way, clearly. So today we're going to be looking at the accents featured in a little TV show called Peaky Blinders. Have you heard of it? If you can understand what these men are saying, you can understand anybody. I will show you an example of the Birmingham accent as featured in Peaky Blinders. Can you understand what they are saying? Here's the first example. Have a listen, see how much you can understand. I have some business to settle first with this accountant, so you go on ahead with Kimber. How much of that did you understand? I'll play it for you one more time, just because I'm nice. I have some business to settle first with this accountant, so you go on ahead with Kimber. What Tommy actually said was this. I have some business to settle first with his accountant. So you go on ahead with Kimba. Now the reason this is difficult to understand is because he's mushing his words together. He's not talking like I'm talking right now. He's mushing all the words together and sometimes when you talk a bit like this, your words can get a bit mushed together and it's a bit hard to understand what he's saying. Business to settle first. Business to settle first. This is why you need to include different accents in your listening practice. Because this is how a lot of people talk. All right, now you're warmed up. Let's listen to another example. Our sins against the beating of children with bricks and houses. I'll play it for you one more time. Our sins against the beating of children with bricks and houses. Now, did he say our sins against the beating of children with bricks and houses? Or did he say our sins against the beating of children with bricks and houses? Houses, not houses. How can you beat a child with a house? Trust me, I've tried. Okay, the main difference between houses and houses is where we start the sound. So if we take this word, ow, 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 why did you whip me? It's that sound, all right? Houses, ah, ah, ow, ow, houses. But this word, ow, ow, starts with a uh. Oh, houses, all right? Get used to that, otherwise you're gonna get very confused between your houses and your houses, all right? Okay, moving on to the next example. And I'm only going to give you this one once. Put them on your face, or it'll be your eyes that are broken. What do you think he said? Go on, tell me. Very good. I feel like Dora the Explorer. This is what he said. Put them on your face or it'll be your eyes that are broken. And the reason this might be hard to understand is the linking R and it's slightly tapped. Put them on your face or it, or it, there's the first one. Put them on your face or it'll be your eyes that are broken, your eyes. So sometimes with the stronger Birmingham accents, when you have an R with a vowel sound after it, it'll slightly tap. So after it, after it, di, 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 almost like a D. So get ready to listen for that when you're listening to someone with a strong Birmingham or black country accent. You might hear it quite a bit. Hear it, hear it quite a bit. Okay, this next example features two speakers. We've got someone asking Tommy Shelby a question and Tommy Shelby answering the question. See if you can understand what this interaction is all about. How far can we go, Mr. Shelby, with this beautiful dream? All the way, brother. All the way. OK, because this one's a bit longer, I'll give it to you again. How far can we go, Mr Shelby, with this beautiful dream? All the way, brother. All the way. What do you think? What did he say? Mm. I'll pretend you got that one right. He said, how far can we go, Mr Shelby, with this beautiful dream? And Tommy said, all the way, brother. All the way. See? You're getting better at this, I can tell. Good on you. Let's move on. Okay, this next one's a little bit of a challenge. You are going to hear Tommy Shelby's voice, but you won't see his lips. Isn't that a shame? So let's see how good your listening skills really are. <laughs> Any man who served in France gets a brandy chaser. Yeah. What do you think? What did he say? Listen to it one more time. <laughs> Any man who 
served in France gets a brandy chaser. Yeah. What he actually said was anyone who served in France gets a brandy chaser. Notice it's not France. France, all right? If it was Alfie Solomon's talking, he would say, France, yeah. anyone who served in France gets a brandy chaser. <laughs> but it's not. We're not from London, we're from Birmingham, so we say France. Okay, let's hear from Arthur Shelby. What is he saying? A kid needs educating, Tommy, really does. Tricky one, isn't it? He actually said, the kid needs educating, Tommy, he really does. Notice the way he says educating, educating. Notice that manipulation of the A, educating, kating, to lock wider, all right? It, A, all those diphthongs, you've got to get used to listening to them. Or if you come to Birmingham, you'll be lost. All right, moving on, I've got somewhere else to be. What is Tommy saying here? The man we did the job for is a High Court judge. Oh, there's that linking tapped R again. Have a listen again. See if you can figure out what he's saying. The man we did the job for is a High Court judge. The man we did the job for is a High Court judge. For is. For is. The, the, the. Judge. Not judge. 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 There's that O oh sound you find in Birmingham and black country accents. You're getting better. Well done. Okay, next example. What is Tommy Shelby saying? You see, our John says you've changed, and I believe him. Here, you can really hear the Birmingham inflections going up at the end, and I believe him. Our John says you've changed, and I believe him. So when you're listening to someone from Birmingham, be ready for it to go up at the end. You see, our John says you've changed, and I believe him. Okay, coming up, we've got another example. And I'll give you a hint. There's a tapped R in there, okay? So be ready for it. Off you go, what's he saying? I've already betrothed you. What do you think he said? I've already betrothed you. I've already betrothed you, I've already betrothed you. It's a really hard thing to say, actually. It's quite difficult. I've already betrothed you. See, those R's are everywhere. R followed by a vowel sound. It's probably going to be tapped if you're listening to someone with a strong accent. Okay, now I've got a proper challenge for you. Can you understand what Tommy Shelby is saying when he has a cigarette in his mouth? Hmm? Which is most of the time, actually, when you think about it. What's he saying here? I think there's a shell about to land and go bang. Would you like it one more time? Go on, then. I think there's a shell about to land and go bang. Go on, then, tell me. What did he say? No! Shame on you. He actually said, I think there's a shell about to land and go bang. Again, we've got land, a very wide a ah, land, and we've also got the diphthong go. Go bang. I think there's a shell about to land and go bang. Okay, I've got another little challenge for you. Can you understand what a Peaky Blinder is saying when there's loud music playing in the back, huh? Have a go. Just the lieutenant, son. I'm signing the officers. Go on, I'll give it to you one more time. Just the lieutenant, son. I'm signing the officers. Now, this might be quite confusing to you if you are more familiar with American English. Because this word here, in American English would be lieutenant, but in Britain we say lieutenant, lieutenant. So Tommy is actually saying, just the lieutenants, John, no sign of the officers. And again, he mushes those words together. Just the lieutenants, John, really mushy. Just the lieutenants, John, no sign of the officers. So what we learn from this is if you want to understand the different accents of the UK, you need to also understand how we pronounce words because sometimes they are different from Americans, Australians or other places where they speak English. Okay, now it's time for the final challenge. Let's see if you've been paying attention. I will play you one last example. What I would like you to do is leave a comment with the phrase. Type it out and don't skip ahead. Listen to it, listen to it again. Feel free to pause, rewind, and see if you can type and send your comment before you hear the answer, okay? Don't cheat. Here's your example. It's customary in Russian royal households to check for such tattoos before engaging a man in business. 
I'll give it to you one more time. It's customary in Russian royal households to check for such tattoos before engaging a man in business. Okay, type your answer. What did Tommy say? Type it, send, type it, send. I'll give you 10 more seconds to have a think. <clears throat> you done? Great. Now let's see if you're right. He says, it's customary in Russian royal households to check for such tattoos before engaging a man in business. Did you get it right? 70% right? 80% right? I'll check in the comments. And that's about all for me today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, well, you can do what you want. Press like, press subscribe, whatever. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you next time. Ta-ta. A huge thank you to our patrons who are currently receiving exclusive English learning content from Smashing English. If you would like to receive this content too, and if you would like your name to be featured at the end of a video, make sure to follow the link in the description down below. Bye.